Hi, students. How is everyone doing? I hope everyone is doing well despite the pandemic. Let us all stay negative but positive. Drink your fluids. So for today's lesson, we will talk about the principles of indigenous creative crafts. The following are the objectives of our lesson. First is to define indigenous materials and then explain the importance of it. And then finally, we are going to distinguish the kinds of tools and materials used in making indigenous creative crafts. Throughout the history of the Philippines, Craftsmanship in many forms has been prevalent. Filipinos have a natural urge to create, exemplifying the state of being completely engaged in their craft and taking delight in what they produce. The Filipino craftsman commits his life to his craft and to telling the Philippines' story, giving the country's true essence, its soul, to the rest of the world. With abundant natural resources, Filipino artisans are able to create wonderful works of art that tell a thousand stories about not only their life, but also the culture of their homeland. Now, let us try to define the concept of indigenous. Concise Oxford Dictionary defines indigenous as to be born in a specific place, but this term has a number of usage. It also refers to the experiences shared by a group, a group of people who have inhabited a place for thousands or hundreds of years. Indigenous people are inheritors and practitioners of distinct cultures and methods of interacting with others and the environment. They have kept social, cultural, economic, and political qualities that differ from the dominant societies in which they dwell. So, who are IPs? As defined by the IPRA, or the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, or a number 8371, Indigenous Peoples or Indigenous Cultural Communities refer to a group of people sharing common bonds of language, customs, traditions, and other distinctive cultural traits, and who have, under claims of ownership, since time immemorial, occupied, possessed, and utilized a territory. So, IP shall include all people who are considered indigenous due to descent from populations who inhabited the country at the time of conquest, colonization, or the establishment of current state boundaries, and who retain some or all of their own social, economic, cultural, and political institutions, but who may have been displaced from their traditional domains or who may have been displaced from their traditional domains. So, why are we talking about indigenous people and their creative crafts? Because just like any other products that we consume every day, these indigenous crafts are significant as them. So, for instance, it promotes our cultural heritage through the use of indigenous materials, thus it preserves the culture of each indigenous community. Handicraft products show each indigenous community's creativity and lofty imagination as well. As lastly, it also provides livelihood for the Filipino people. Producers of raw materials will be encouraged to produce more, thus ascending employment. And in turn, the income generated will contribute to the earnings of the country. Now, let us take a look. At the various materials that are used in the certain or in the creation of the crafts. We'll talk about the indigenous communities that make up these magnificent crafts in our next lesson. So abaca comes first. Abaca is one of the 30 um, five fiber crops native to the Philippines. It's known as the world's strongest natural fiber. Handbags, hats, shoes, slippers, lumps, rugs, accessories, decorations, apparel, furniture, wall coverings, and textiles are only a few examples of abaca crafts. Now let's have Rattan, or Yantok in Filipino, is it is a tall, thin climbing plant with sheaths protected by spines that help maintain the rattan as it grows on other plants in the forest. 
baskets, hats, wall decor, ashtrays, picture frames, sofa sets, TV racks, cupboards, and other goods and furniture for home use are examples of rattan crafts, as you can see in this picture. Okay, now let's have the next one. We have the bamboo. So this is the art of turning bamboo into practical items. Bamboo is used to make bahay kubo, furniture, home furnishings such as hangers, trays, dividers, lampshades, and a variety of other items. Now let's have the coconut shell. So this is the art of making items out of coconut shells, of course. So after the cockle flesh is scrapped from the shells, it is cleaned and cut into a variety of forms for usage in items like uh, such as buttons, brushes, table lamps, dippers, buckles, and other accessories. The coconut necklace is another coconut shell artisan product. And next, we have the Buri. The Buri palm is the most common palm in the Philippines. The Buri palm's most important feature is its leaf. The petiole generates a fiber known as buntal, which is used to make hats, purses, and even ornaments. Young buds' coarser fibers are spun into ropes, while mature leaves are used to wrap tobacco bales, and the ribs are used to manufacture brooms, hats, mats, fabric, and bags. And lastly, we have the leather. So, taxidermy, or the technique of preparing, filling, and mounting animal skins, uses the head and portion of the rear of the animal. Bags, shoes, jackets, coin purses, gloves, belts, wallets, and other leather items are examples of these crafts. All right, so that's the end of our lesson today. Thank you so much and see you on our next class. Please don't forget to subscribe. See you!